This court would be called upon to discharge its duties as perhaps no other court has so far been called upon to do so." Unquote. I would like to begin with the identifying few contributing factors for docket explosion in the Indian scenario. If a Tashildar acts upon a grievance of a farmer regarding land survey or a ration card, the farmer would not think of approaching the court. If a municipal authority or a gram panchayat discharges its duty properly, the citizens need not look to courts. If revenue authorities acquire land through due process of law, the courts would not be burdened by land disputes. Apparently, these cases account to 66% of pendency. It is beyond my understanding as to why inter-interdepartmental disputes of the governments or fights between public sector undertakings and the governments end up in courts. If service laws are applied fairly in matters of seniority, pension and so on, no employee will be compelled to go to courts. It is well known and acknowledged fact that government are the biggest litigants, accord, big, biggest litigants. according to the statistics it is nearly 50% of the cases. If police investigates properly, fairly, if illegal arrest and custodial torture comes to an end, then no victim will have to approach the courts. Abiding by law and constitution is the key for to good governance. However, this is often ignored. The opinions of law departments are not sought in the rush to implement executive decisions. Lack of people, special public prosecutors and standing councils and the government leaders in courts is one of the major concerns which needs urgent remedy. The decisions of the court are not implemented by governments for years together. The resultant contempt petitions are a new category of burden on the courts, which is a direct result of defiance by governments. Deliberate inaction by the governments despite judicial pronouncements are not good for the health of democracy. The judiciary is also confronted with the issues of the executive willingly transferring the burden of decision making to it. Although policy making is not our domain, but if a citizen comes to the court with a prayer to address his grievance, the courts cannot say no. At times, ambiguities in legislation also add to existing legal issues. If the legislature passes a law with clarity of thought, foresight, and with people's welfare in mind, the scope of litigation gets minimized. The legislature is expected to solicit the views of the public and debate the bills class by class, third bear, before enacting a law. When I expressed concern about the passing of laws without much legislative scrutiny on the 15th August last year, I was misunderstood by some quarters. Let there be no doubt, I have the highest regard for the legislature and the elected representatives. I value the role played by each of them in our democracy, right from a ward member to a member of parliament. I was merely pointing towards certain deficiencies. Interestingly, my sentiments of law making in India were shared by none other than the Honorable Lok Sabha Speaker, Sri Om Birla, who reportedly a few weeks back, I quote, Law should be made after thorough debates and discussions, incorporating the needs of the aspirational sections of the society." Unquote. 